What's up everybody, DevTool here. In today's video, I wanna to talk to you about an extremely important topic in software engineering, and that's how to write automated tests for your database related code. This is hands down one of the most critical things you can test in software because it deals with how you persist data and how you retrieve persisted data in your system. It has to be correct in order to maintain data integrity. I've seen and heard about a variety of patterns, including testing with SQLite or using some sort of in-memory alternative. However, from my eight or nine years working professionally as a software engineer, the established best practice is to typically run your automated tests against a locally running instance of your database, ideally through something like Docker. Now, I'm sure that's not a surprise for many of you watching this video right now, but what I'm planning to do in this video is show you how I like to set up my project so that we can have the best developer experience writing and executing our tests. Make sure you stick around till the end of the video and I'll show you an open source tool that can help you take this a step further. To kick things off, I'd like to walk you through how I structure my Docker Compose file. I typically like to run two separate Docker containers for my database. The first one is for running my app locally. I have a volume set up so that data is persisted in between app runs. And then I've got a separate database port configured here. For my test database, which is running during my integration tests or my automated tests, I'm not using a volume at all because I don't care about persisting any data in between test runs. And then I'm also using a completely separate port here so that we can maintain isolation between both of these databases. For my application and database related configs, I usually load these directly from environment variables into a struct called config. And I also hang a method called database URL off of the config itself that automatically constructs this database URL for me. I also like to have sort of an enum that represents the current environment. The default is dev, which is me running the app locally, and then I'll have separate environments for test and prod. These are determined via an environment variable called env. Now, when I'm constructing my config, I'll actually check if I'm in the test environment. So is the environment variable set to test? And then I will use that to override my database port. And this allows me to connect to the isolated test database instance. And this actually will dynamically construct the correct URL, which connects to the test database instance. Now for writing the unit tests themselves, I actually like to prepare a test fixture called test env. And this will basically hold the dependencies I need to execute my database related code. I'll have my application config and a reference to the SQL database. And then what I'll do to construct this is override the environment variable to the test environment. And as mentioned previously, that allows me to override my database URL so that I'm connecting to the test container. And then I'll basically just construct my config and the instance of the database and then return that as part of the test env. I also like to hang a method off of the test env called setupdb that takes a reference to the testing object. What this does is it actually looks up my migrations directory, prepares the migration, and executes it so that I can have the latest schema for my database code. One thing I'm actually doing right here is a quirk related to the go migrate library. And basically an error will be returned if there's no migration change. That's a fine error for me and I just am gonna skip it. One thing I also like to do is return a cleanup func and all this is doing is just truncating my database tables so that I can have a clean database setup each time a test runs. Now, if we take a look at a unit test itself, all I have to do is construct an instance of the test env, invoke the setupdb method, and have a reference to the cleanup helper. And then I can call tcleanup, which will execute this cleanup function at the end of the test, regardless if it fails or succeeds. And what this does is it makes sure that my database is clean for each test that's running. One thing you may be wondering is, couldn't there be conflicts between tests? Maybe one unit test would cause conflicts with another unit test in terms of what data is in the database. And this actually shouldn't be a problem if you're putting all of your database related code in one package, because in Go, unit tests are gonna run serially within a given package, unless of course you're specifying that they should run in parallel. Now, if you have multiple Go packages that are testing against the same database, you may need to take a slightly different approach, maybe even construct a separate database per package so that you don't run into conflicts in that way. Now, for me, I'm just keeping all of my database related code in one package, so this works totally fine. But as you can see, this keeps the test quite clean. I can set up and clean up the database, make my assertions, and this works quite well. 
Now, before we end the video, there's one more thing I wanted to show you, and that's this really cool open source tool called Test Containers. This is basically a tool that allows you to programmatically spin up your containers that are used as dependencies in your software. So basically, instead of running Docker Compose as a separate process in the background, you could actually use this programmatically in your test fixture to spin up the container and actually do the cleanup as part of your test code. So if you take a look at this quick start here, it's just a library you need to import in Go. And you can have some boilerplate code that that will spin up whatever data store or whatever container you need as part of your integration or smoke testing. So this is a super cool package that I came across. Now I personally haven't used this package yet, but it seems pretty promising in terms of making a nice clean test setup. Um, if you want me to dive into this as part of a future video, definitely let me know in the comments. Also, if you've used this package, I'd like to hear what your experience is in the comments as well. So that's all I have for you in this video today. I hope it was helpful. Make sure you like the video and subscribe for future content like this. I will see you guys in the next one.